What's up guys and welcome back to a new video where we'll be diving into filters in Nova. Quick pause. Do you want to support the channel and want me to continue on creating content? Well, you can support the channel on Patreon right now where you get benefits such as a private Discord group where you can share your coding issues and other developers will help you out. If you are interested to join, the link can be found in the description down below. Now by default, Nova adds a couple filters on your resource overview. If we navigate back to Google Chrome, you will find an icon in the top right corner, which will represent the filters of our table. If we click on it, you'll see that we can filter based on trashed and untrashed and the amount of products you would like to see per page. There are different types of filters that we could use when it comes to filtering. And I won't be able to cover them all since not all types of filters are suitable for the example we've got. So I want to start off with the most common one, which is the select filter which we could basically see right here, where it gives you an option to select from a dropdown. Now let's say that we want to add a filter right here where we could filter between the brands. And whenever you want to create a new filter, you need to navigate to the CLI because there is obviously a command for it, which is the PHP Artisan Nova command. And we're gonna create a filter where we do need to name it. So let's say that we want to create a filter where a user can select product from a brand. If we hit enter, you'll see that Artisan prompted us with a message saying that a new filter has been generated inside the app directory, Nova subdirectory, where it's created a new subdirectory named filters with a product brand class. So let's navigate to PHPStorm to open the file. So right here we have filters and our product brands. So if we open it, it has one property defined right here called component, which will represent the filter type. In our case, we will indeed work with the default one, which is the select filter. Once you scroll down, you'll find two methods that have been added right here. The first one is the apply method right here, which handles the underlying eloquent query of your filter. While the second method is the option method right at the bottom, which defines the values the filter may have. Now filters won't be added to all resources. So we need to make sure that we register our filter for the resource class we would like to use it on with the table overview. Now we will be using our product brand filter on our products overview. So what we could do is navigating to our product resource class and search for filters. Right here, you'll see that every resource class comes with a method where you could add filters on inside an array right here. So let's do that. So let's say that we want to return a new product brand class. Right now, we have registered our first filter. So let's test it out inside the browser. Inside Google Chrome, let's refresh it, click on our dropdown, and you'll see that we added our new filter named product brand with zero options inside of it. So that's the next step. Let's make sure that we add the filter options right here. And once again, this needs to happen inside the filter class. So let's do that. Let's navigate to our product brand class. And we're gonna start off with the apply method right here. And if we take a quick look at the arguments from the apply method right here, you'll see that we need to return some kind of eloquent query since it has a variable named query. So let's do that. We are returning our query right here. Now we're gonna perform a where query since we want to select products where their brand is equal to a brand ID. So let's chain the where method right after our query right here, where we need to pass in two values. The first one is a column name, which will be brand underscore ID, while the second parameter will be the value right inside of the argument right here. Now next up is defining the options inside the dropdown. Keep in mind that we don't want to add all brands statically right here at the bottom, but we rather want to perform a database request to get all brands, loop over them and return it back as options. So let's do that. Let's remove our return statement. Let's define a new variable called new options, which is equal to an array. Then we're gonna add a for each loop because we're gonna loop over our brand model where we're gonna get all values as one single brand. Then inside our loop, we're simply gonna set our array that we have right here. So new options, brackets equal to the brand ID. Now keep in mind that we need to define a key as well, otherwise it will be zero, one, and two. 
of brand name. Finally, we need to make sure that we return our new options array. Now, if we navigate to the browser, refresh it, open our filter, click on the drop down, you'll see that we added Apple, Microsoft, and Adidas right here. So let's add Adidas first, where you'll see that no products have been found because we don't have any products inside our database where the product brand is equal to Adidas. And if we change it to Apple, you'll see that both products have been found. Now this was it for this episode where we dived into adding a custom filter in Laravel Nova. In the next video, we're gonna have a look at metrics in Laravel Nova. If you do like my content and you want to see more, leave this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button. Thank <laughs> you.